on. Okay, hi everybody. So welcome to the interview that we're going to um, conduct um, with uh, Professor Chen Ruan Shui of Chengkung University of Taiwan. Um, and we'll be talking about the work um, that was done in their uh, course um, under the larger umbrella of the ArcDR3 initiative um, that was conducted over the last couple of years. Um, we will have um, on the interviewer side, we have a Professor Donald Bates, um, uh, who's the Chair of Architectural Design and the Deputy Dean of Engagement at the Melbourne School of Design, University of Melbourne. Um, we have Lady Asensio Viloria, of uh, a Senior Lecturer in Urban Design and Architecture at the Melbourne School of Design, University of Melbourne. And we have uh, myself, David Ma, a Senior Lecturer, again, of the Melbourne School of Design at the University of Melbourne. Um, so maybe just uh, to get started with the interview, we can, um, I can do the first question uh, and it will be a more general one um, regarding the outcomes of the course. So uh, through the work of the studio course, you know, could you tell us what uh, innovative or unconventional strategies um, at both the larger and the smaller scales, you know, what, what emerged or informed the um, proposals that were, uh, were the outcomes of your studio? Yes, uh, the the in 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 this project actually we are uh, the project was divided in two years. It stretched in two years, so we went through two different studios because the student our program is in one year one and a half year program. So we have to divide this uh, project into two different programs. So. So the first year student that developed the more regional strategies. And then the second year students, they, the, the, in second year, the students, they develop more detail uh, in terms of time and in terms of architectural scale, uh, they develop into detail, uh, even construction technique, this kind of detail to, to kind of finalize the whole design. So, so the, the, I think the unconventional uh, part of this project is it was done through two different groups. That, that's kind of very rare. And in, in our uh, school uh, uh, syllabus, because the, the, usually the students, they don't follow the previous year students, what they are doing. So they, they would create their own idea. But, but because of this program, uh, we are able to kind of experiment uh, and kind of that two year and divide it into two different group of students uh, methodology to, to incorporate in our syllabus. So, so that's one kind of uh, unconventional way to teach. And uh, the, the, the intents of a design project, and I think the uh, kind of innovative strategy the students develop is about the giving back our man-made land to the nature. I think that's also a very kind of unconventional way because we are dealing with the, 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 the huge area of the coastline and the coastline has to be uh, kind of man-made to protect the flooding or protect from the natural disaster as the, for example, the storm surge or the typhoon. And so the students strategy in, in, in this project is to kind of giving way, give, uh, giving up all this uh, man-made protection and try to uh, utilize more ecological way to transform these man-made dikes or the, 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 this uh, fixed section of the coastline into more ecological way and to coexist with uh, the natural disaster. And also they, they, in the project, we also try to use uh, uh, different phases of time. So, so the, the project uh, kind of stretch into 100 years of time frame. So different, different, different uh, period of time, they have different kind of strategy to develop uh, uh, going further. Uh, so from the adaptation and to coexist with the nature, and then the second phase will be more 
uh, connect to the industrial production kind of uh, way. And then the third part will be start weaving the, the social and weaving the everyday life into this, this big transformation of the land. That's kind of the, 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 the project's unconventional or more uh, kind of innovative way, I think. Oh, it's interesting. I, I might jump in if that's okay, David. I, uh, and I know that really this is conversation is supposed to be the University of Melbourne asking the University in Taiwan, mm -hmm. but in a way I want to ask both because uh, we often run studios, uh, even though they're semester by semester, some mm -hmm. studios will repeat the same project yes. and get different versions. And certainly from the studio that David and Lea have been running. In fact, I think they've run it for three semesters already. Uh, and so I guess the question I would wanna ask in the context of that is, were you able to see a kind of comparative difference between when the first group of students looked at the project and maybe learn, and then the second group maybe learned from the first and then pushed it further, or did they take it in a very different direction? So I guess it's a question of, do students use uh, previous work to go forward, or do they use previous work to take a different direction? I'll, I'll let you answer first, uh, Professor Sway. No, no, no. I, I, I raised the hand because the kind of in the in between there's some breakup of your talking, so okay. I cannot uh, uh, get the okay. floor. I'll, I'll repeat it then, if that's okay. Yes. So the question I was asking, because the studio that David and Lyra have been running has effectively done a similar project three mm -hmm. times. And one of the things we're always interested in is the degree to which the second group or the third group of students use the previous work and take it further and develop from it, or they see a completely different direction mm -hmm. and change the direction and understanding of a project. So I was curious for, for your students, mm -hmm. uh, what was the difference between the first group of students and the second group of students in terms of how they responded to the issues? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in our first year student, they, we kind of uh, tell them to focus on the more regional, the bigger scale, uh, design strategies without going into too much detail of the architecture because in the beginning we 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 try to uh, plan to let the second year stu uh, studio to to develop more detail but uh, but actually the, the the second in the second year the studio the new students they they of course they don't follow the, the first year's studios, their outcome. And they think that they still criticize the first year students outcome first and thinking that our first year project is too man-made or it's too top-down and to kind of try to control everything like in an unnatural way. That, 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 that's our experience. And of course, because we try to let the first year studio, studio uh, do the more top down and that, that's, a, that, that, that's a problem also, because if you do it more in the bigger scale, you tend to be more top down. You, you, you lose the connection to the more small scale, uh, lose the connection to the community and the, the, the bottom up, uh, uh, observation from the, to the side. And so the second year student, they try to criticize this kind of top-down method first. And then they, they would, they, they, they end up uh, going to the side more often and try to connect more community groups and the, the, all these uh, fishermen and, and even the, some, some the community leaders and some actors in the community. And so, so I think that that, that, that makes our two years stretching uh, project uh, kind of interesting for me to look at from the top down and the more button up uh, approach. And I think it's a very great experience for me. Uh, 
Lyra, or or maybe David, do you have uh, any thoughts on that from from your students over the, um, the various iterations? So I, I think um, you know, in, in some ways, I think it's a little bit of both scenarios that you described. I think um, in some senses, you know, the first semester was really building up a lot of the kind of uh, knowledge and and, and um, research, the kind of wider research uh, pertaining to the site and all the kind of different metabolisms of the city. Um, and then, you know, in, in some senses, because of that kind of strong, long period of dedication to, to that, um, it ended up being, you know, sometimes the, the the, the proposals were a little bit more schematic. So then there were some projects in the subsequent semesters that would actually take a, a lot of the things which were initiated by the kind of earlier teams and extend it, give it more definition, more detail, give it more consideration. But there were also other students, other teams that would actually find within that larger body of research, because all that larger body of research didn't necessarily lead directly to the proposal. So there was a body of knowledge that was there to, to be mined from. So a lot of teams also actually took parallel or, or what do you call it, like lateral shifts in, in, in focus. Um, and you know the, the interesting thing I think I was gonna ask Professor Shui is also this kind of bottom up, top down thing, that conversation that you're describing uh, between your first year and second year sounds it's, it's a really quite an interesting like a didactic uh, method because uh -huh. you are you know you're forcing them to be critical and there's this there's this dialogue about top down versus bottom up and then what what you gain from being bottom up versus what you gain from being top down you know uh, what you lose in, in and also what you lose in those two different approaches is it's an interesting uh, conversation I think that was sounded very like a very kind of fruitful dialogue yeah. One thing that I will add, perhaps, David, is um, to what you mentioned, is that, uh, yes, it, it is true that that first semester, uh, perhaps there was much more research into the site and different uh, systems that were uh, involved when, de when dealing with hydrological uh, issues. Consequent semesters perhaps could dive in a bit more into the detail of the of their schemes because they benefited a lot from that earlier research. But also, I think it started to um, allow them to question certain things similar to your students. So, for example, we started to go in outside the site boundaries uh, because they realized that in order to have a true impact on our site, they needed to understand the larger uh, perhaps more regional kind of network and, and perhaps affect some of the um, the hydrological conditions up the stream. Uh, I mean, without going into much detail about our actual site, but basically, I, I think that was very interesting. The fact that even in uh, going outside the site boundaries, and also thinking uh, when looking at the metabolic systems, they started to realize the importance of a parallel kind of um, systems such as the food production, etc., that perhaps are not exactly dealing with the, the hydrological uh, organization of the site, the hydrological systems, but in a moment of shock, uh, it's extremely important to have kind of considered it and, and, and um, uh, you know, work towards uh, being able to, 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 um, to serve that kind of area. So in a way, I think that that has been interesting of having several iterations of the, of the studio that it allows us, allows us to kind of put more emphasis on certain areas as we move um, forward with the studio. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, maybe I jump into the, oh, uh, oh yeah, this one. I think Professor Shwe's, um, we, I think we, we just lost, lost him. Yeah, we can cut the video later anyway. Yeah, yeah I think they'll edit it up <laughs> later. Yeah, you're, thank you, you're, thank you're you for the microphone. Yeah, it's Sorry. rubbing and creating a lot of background. Noise. Uh, okay, I'll keep it like this. I always have that trouble with this mic. I should get a different one, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wait for Professor Shwe to come back in. They can edit that part of mine too if it's too. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, until he comes, uh, congratulations, Don. It seems that uh, after all that big effort. Well, at least, it. yeah, I mean, we got five years, but I'm still annoyed that uh, we still had a few things to fix up. Yeah. Right. Uh, I guess they can't live without saying something, you know? But. Hey, Professor Shui, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, sorry, it was uh, kind of, I don't know the network. 
don't worry, yeah. we can edit the video later on. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, do you want to yes. ask? Yeah. So I will ask the second question. Maybe if you mute. Yeah, good. Just uh, because of the echo. So I'll, ask, I'll go for the second question then. So what did you learn along the way from hypothesis to thesis? Were there uh, moments when the outcomes help you consider the original hypothesis and perhaps rethink that? Uh, and in that uh, line, did the research produce unexpected findings or outcomes? Uh, yeah, in our project, in the beginning, we, because it's like a, a two, two, across the two studios, so the, the studio set up the overall agenda and uh, maybe the, the big strategies across the big, big land. And that, that kind of, uh, that I, I, to answer the, the, the previous question, I, I mentioned the second studio start criticize the, the first studio's strategy. And so, so it, there was a time I, we have to fight with the student to, to, to create a the first studio that they started the address. And so, so we kind of, uh, I think we, we spent a student with uh, we I think it's <laughs> yeah, I think this I'm not sure this is gonna work right at this moment. I'm wondering if we yeah. need to reschedule it for either later. I don't know if it's because all of the network's being used right now or yeah, it's just yeah, a particular location that he's 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 at that's having trouble. I mean, um, I don't think it's a good idea, but I'm wondering if it's better for us to also turn our um, some of us, the ones who are not talking, turn the camera off. I don't know if that changes the bandwidth issue, or well, it's probably more his connection. Yeah, I think it's more his connection because it seems like he's the one that keeps dropping out and and right. losing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. But we can definitely reschedule. I mean, that's not a problem. The, the only issue we have with the logistics over here is that then I'm afraid probably will be David and you doing it, or maybe we can yeah. do it later in the evening and then I can do one with you, Don, somewhere. Yeah. Because at the moment we have managed to get the kids out of there. Yeah, 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 no, I understand. The house, yeah, which yeah. makes it so much easier. But uh, we all, all we could reschedule for next week if UCLA is, ha is okay with us sending them their video a bit later. Well, yeah. No, no, nobody's uh, contacted. Sorry. Sorry, nobody's contacted, uh, contacted us uh, for the interviews yet. So <laughs> I forget when they said, I, I can't remember if it was this by. Was the this was the last week. Was it they this week? It by, they wanted it by, uh, by, I think, early next week or end of this, like, basically, I think. Some, something like that, like early yeah. November or something, wasn't it? It was something, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe I maybe I completely got it wrong. Maybe it was not November 4th. It was maybe November 14th. I can all have to. No, check. I think it was probably it was earlier. I think probably mm -hmm. the 4th rather than the, but still, that's, that's next uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Something like yeah, that. It is the fourth LA time, which would be Friday our time. So, you know. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, it, if it is the fourth, then definitely we can do next week. Look, it's because he's not. He hasn't even been able to reconnect. I think we. I think we're going to have to postpone it because otherwise we're just going to keep getting interrupted and yeah, and having to keep going okay. over it. I think. But we'll, so, do, we'll do a premiere thing. Premier where we can stitch the first, at least the first couple of answers and then yeah, stitch it yeah. back into the next answers, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, as long as we keep the same backgrounds, we won't actually really notice the difference. Yeah. And yeah. the same clothes. Remember, you got to wear the same clothes. <laughs> it's called continuity. We need a continuity uh, manager. Right, here we go. Sorry about that. I just, the computer just totally crashed. No, no, never had totally that. Crashed. Right. Um, do you want to try just one more time, yeah. or do you want to see if you yes, want to yes. wish? I mean, how how you find how you finding the connection generally? Do you prefer that we uh, reschedule it to another time uh, for the IT issues, or do you want to try again? You think? 
No, we, we, that, that, let's try again because it never happened. Okay. It's just okay. No problem. Yeah, very Perfect. strange. Okay. Okay. No problem. So, so Professor Shui, will will you like yes. that I I repeat the question again, or do you start answering that second question, third question? Uh, do you remember, or shall I repeat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I just just start to answer the question. Okay. Maybe yeah, was, try to explain different way. Thank you so much. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So the the to respond to this question, I, I think I will use uh, the example in our design as a uh, uh, more specific to, to make it more specific. Uh, in, in our design strategy, our first phase, we, we are dealing with the, the nature, how, how do we uh, um, try to uh, um, get rid of all this man-made structure uh, in the coastline area and, and try to give him back to the nature all this uh, to, to make it more ecological coastline. And, and that, that, that is a kind of big issue in our design strategy because it is the, the first phase of the design. And so we start discussing with the students, how do we, do we, do we uh, intentionally demolish the, all these man-made dikes or we leave it as it is uh, we, without really uh, putting more energy to destroy and create a na natural landscape or we leave it like that and create our uh, using other methodology to let the nature grow across the man-made structure or those infrastructure uh, along the coastline. And so, so we are kind of uh, have a long debate on do we spend uh, more energy on destroying the already existing or we leave it as it is and try to put other methodology to like break that try to open, just make a small hole or making uh, some opening along the coast and without destroying everything. And so we talk with uh, other ocean engineers in our university. And so that many engineers gave us uh, different uh, opinions and uh, suggestions. So, so that helped a lot. Uh, at the end, we kind of combining uh, in between, destroy part of them and believe part of them. I kind of uh, approached uh, uh, kind of balance at the end. So that is one, Probably, I don't know if it's answer this kind of question. I think that I, it's interesting because I that was you sort of ended where I was going to ask a question, which mm -hmm. had to do because you you explained, if I understood correctly, mm -hmm. that uh, at least in the second group, mm -hmm. there was also an engagement with some of the community. And stuff. Yes. So I think for both groups, both in Taiwan and also here in Melbourne, you know, the, the project that we're looking at are, they're not just purely an architectural project where mm -hmm. a, a, an architecture student does a, mm -hmm. a, a solution, you might say. They're mm -hmm. actually quite big, complicated infrastructural questions. So I was interested to hear a bit more about what are the multidisciplinary inputs that you might have had, whether it was from experts mm -hmm. or the community who's also an expert in a diff but in a different way. So I was, could you say a little bit about what kind of input you had beyond the purely architectural or urban design? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, I think the, 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 the one I just mentioned is because our university has a kind of department of ocean engineering department. And there are many uh, researchers are on the same side that we pick in our project. So we are able to collaborate with all these engineers. And so, so over the years, they have been monitoring the coastline, the shifting of the coastline, because destroying by the ocean or the storm surge or even the, the wind. And so the sand dune is, is moving every year. And even to the 50 meter per year, the, the, the distance they can move. So, so because of this database or, and, and 
all this research, they are also part of the research are trying to destabilize, uh, trying to stabilize the moving of the, the coastline by man, a lot of man-made uh, methodology. And all, all in, in, in these methodologies, they also include some more ecological way. For example, they are using the, some, some more, more uh, organic fabric to, to, to wrap the sand and as a kind of new way of coastline. And, and other ways, that including they use a bamboo structure to, to stabilize the, the coastline and to create a, a, a new kind of defense and to replace the man-made concrete, the, the concrete dikes. And so the students start to, uh, to, to get the, all this research and to get in touch with all the engineers and, and realizing and understanding all these different methodology and how they uh, affect the coastline and what's the benefit or what's the disadvantage of all kind of methodology. So, and, and all this research, uh, our ocean engineers, and they, they also have some contact connection with the local communities because in order to build these like bamboo structures and they also very often to, to work with the local community to, to, to experiment all these new technologies. And so in the same time, the, all these local fishermen can utilize this bamboo structure to, to help their, their aquaculture uh, productions. All, all sorts of uh, collaboration is already in place. So, so we kind of join them and that the students uh, get involved and engage with the people. So it's, it's I think it's the expert and then the local people at the same time, the, the, our students are kind of uh, uh, start co-working with the, those people. So it's not, uh, so I think that they help their project a lot. Okay, so moving to the next question. Um, um, did you see overlaps, commonalities between your research and those of other universities tackling the same topic? Uh, I think the, the, I learned, we, we learned a lot from the, the NUS, NUS project, uh, this uh, forest, forestation project uh, in Singapore and that the, is for, for us is kind of very uh, similar strategies using a more bigger scale uh, approach and, and, and very simple idea or the concept and to cover the, the, the to apply this strategy in the bigger area and, and make, make very kind of landscape urbanism approach. I would say, and so in our project, of course, it's not about the the forest or forestry, forestation, and it's more about the 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 the, the water, the sea water, and the aquaculture uh, across our landscape. So, but but it's in a in a way, it's also very landscape uh, urbanism, the kind of approach. So so I I think we our project benefit from. The, the NUS uh, first master project a lot. Um, I was also going to say, I mean, obviously there's a high degree of complexity of the different scales and mm -hmm. scope of things that your students were asked to handle. I mean, I do realize that you did artificially divide the task into two different scales, but, um, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, certainly they, a lot of the students, no matter which semester they were in, they were engaging with things beyond what a, a conventional architects, you know, the remit of an architect. So how did, how did you find the students and, you know, also the studio was beyond consulting uh, engineers, more about the synthesis process of all of this different information. How did you, like, I, I would assume that it was a learning process for the students too. How did you, how did you see that like happening in, in your, in your. Hmm. 
I can, can, can you address the, the question a little bit? Uh, Oh, yeah. So, uh, what, so uh, sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. No, no. I I fully understand. So, what 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 kind of let's say specific strategies did you see the students adopt to be able to, uh, you know, handle and and orchestrate all of these different concerns? So, I mean, you know, um, obviously, um, and a lot of them might also be new to a lot of things. So maybe a lot of the students wouldn't have necessarily dealt with regional issues before and then to some extent maybe a lot of other students might not have done i guess if you could almost say like anthropological issues right somehow right mm -hmm. so how how did you see like what were the strategies um that you think that they used uh or they followed to be able to get this new skills and new information and okay so so to answer the question uh my strategy is to, to get the student to the site and to, to use their body to experience, not only to experience, but to kind of address the embodied experience on the site. And, and maybe also to understand to, to be, because we believe a lot of lo local knowledge is already on the side, and even by observing the fishermen's uh, daily routine, you you learn a lot. See how they can uh, adapt to the uh, all these natural risks or natural disasters, and just by observing and by analyzing their living cycles, you learn a lot already. And so, so we encourage the student to use their body to not only to observe, but to experience, to engage, to immerse their, their own body in the environment. And so the first thing we did is to, we, we bring the student to take the boat. We, we did a boat trip. Uh, it's not, a, a, not like, a, yeah, the kind of boat. It's, very, it's a fisherman boat. So, so it's a kind of raft. And, and so the student's body start to, to really engage with the, the, the floating and to, to the tide up and down or, or to the sand, the, the, the relationship between the sand and the water in, with their own body. And, and I think that's the first step. We, we want to have this embodied experience to, to help them realize a lot of uh, resilient knowledge is not only on the textbook or it's not only in the paper architecture, that kind of draw in a drawing, but it's embedded in their, their, their body, how their body can respond to the nature um, without really thinking too much. Their body already uh, start to react and to can, can man maneuver in the, on the sand or in this kind of community, they can, uh, already like in one or two days, they can really uh, use their body to sense the, all the resilient issues or regenerative issues better. I think, I don't know if that answer your question, but that's my, my first, first. No, uh, no, that, uh, no, no, that was very clear uh, about getting a kind of intuitive material tactile yes. understanding of things. I mean, I was just going to say that it was a very big luxury because we we are living in the most lockdown city in the world, oh. mm -hmm. so we, <laughs> so it was very hard for us to, to actually do anything related to physically visiting the site. But I, I, Don, did you have a question? Yeah, just maybe following on from that, and again, this is an issue that that we uh, deal with. I mean, again, because of the scale of the project and the sort of larger scale issues we often end up working in groups um, and it becomes group work. And for a lot of architecture students, that's sometimes uh, a bit uh, of a conflict because they see themselves as individuals coming up with individual creative responses. So I'm curious uh, again, whether in your two groups, they, your two studios over time, they did work as a, a complete studio or they worked in groups within the studio or they did some group work and then individual work. I'm curious how you organize the actual work between group work and putting together large scale uh, proposals or individual uh, uh, interventions within the larger uh, context. Uh, 
Uh, yes, we, we, uh, we, we really don't really divide the the, the, the group. We, we let students to organize in in themselves. So it's a kind of self organized group work, and because the eventually in the during the process, the student they start to get to know each other better. They know their 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 classmates' uh, skills or capacities in the design. So some students are better in the drawing, or some students are better in editing the movies, and some are better in the more strategic thinking. They can, and some are better in designing details. I think that's eventually they 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 separate their work in kind of different scale and in, into different categories. But but although they are uh, in the beginning, they they we we try to work as a one group only. But at the end, they have to uh, finalize a lot of uh, different aspect of the project and different details. So. So they have to uh, really divide into teamwork and in, into small groups. And some are just working by uh, himself or herself, just one person work. For example, the editing of movie is just done by one, one person. So, but, but there's other, every student or every small group, they will ask for the material uh, to, to, to be uh, to be uh, fit into every small group. So and uh, and thanks to the, the all this Google Drive or the this technology in the computer, so they are, they they are still able to really work very well. Uh, uh, spreading their information along the uh, among the, the the bigger groups. Even though they are working in small small groups, the other group they are still aware of what the big picture is, and so so I think also they, they with the help with the technology, they they are they, they are the generation that are able to work uh, multitasking and and in in the multi group multi collaboration method or settings. And, and so we, we you, kind of let them self-organize. And, and, and in that self-organization, were there times when you, in overlooking it, said, look, uh, we need a bit more effort over here because you know everybody's working here, but maybe in order to make the whole thing work, we need to put, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm curious yeah, yes, yes. how much you in the background were not, not forcing groups to go together, but rather, pushing the attention to make sure that the overall plan might be uh -huh. developed. Yeah, I, th I think similar to, to everyone, every teacher, I think we, we in the beginning, I think we, we push harder, but kind of after the midterm or the, at the end, toward the end, we, we kind of let it more relaxed. So, so they didn't talk and, and even fight among themselves and with, without too much interfere. But in the beginning, we really, we, we, we really uh, had to discuss uh, more often and, and kind of put in more effort into the, 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 the direction that, that can really uh, work among all these small groups. So, and, and also among the the previous studios, because they are, they, in the beginning, they didn't believe their first studio's uh, strategy. So, so in the beginning, we really had to work hard. Oh, um, I, I was just gonna say one, maybe changing it slightly, but I think maybe building on that, but shifting it slightly to another area. Um, you know, as we know, this this larger ambition for the initiative for uh, looking at um, regenerative ev evolutionary regenerative uh, urbanism or systems. Um, so, um, what are the you know what were the themes or the properties or the organizational ideas that were you know that came out of the studio 
or you know guided the studio that that you know made you you and the students more clear about what that meant what does evolutionary regenerative systems mean and what are the you know the behaviors performances or organizational things uh, principles or themes that needed to be there to be able to be a, an evg or what you can if evolutionary regenerative er s <laughs> system yeah and I know somehow I, I almost I almost feel that your description of uh, the way that you are managing this self-organizing system and you know, has something behind it <laughs> that maybe also could be you know talked about. But no, I mean I, I don't want to preempt your your answer. But, but yeah, that that that, that that's uh, a big question. And 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 actually because for this kind of because uh, I've been teaching. Uh, Urban design or resilient urban design for quite many years. So, so of course I have my own philosophy already embedded in my way of teaching, and 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 very often I share with the student my kind of philosophy. And like for example, one of them is about the the liquid perception. So, <laughs> it's from the the mo mo movie the the French. Uh, Academy of Film, the liquid perception so because it also uh, connect with our major subject. We are all, always very often dealing with the water issue. So, so and but in a in a movie, the liquid perception is about the uh, encourage our viewers and uh, not fix at the solid state, but that our body or our, our way of seeing things more in a liquid, in a liquid way. So, so that means more adaptation, more, uh, more moving, shifting between different issues and or, or shifting among different viewpoints and different ideas. So this, this kind of, I think uh, affect the way I direct our design studio also so 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 kind of that idea not not try to fix fix at just one aspect so the the design for example design has to be shifting between different scale the same idea has to be co corresponded to 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 be multi scalar uh, strategies and 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 even the idea among different group, they are not like they are not. We are not picking the strongest one to replace the 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 weak concept. We are trying to assemblage everyone's idea into one project. So everyone's uh, that means everyone's idea counts. You have to the student have to include everyone's idea into the project not try to filter out or not try to uh, exclude some idea they don't like. They, they have to incorporate, uh, even though they don't agree, the, the idea they don't agree, they have to try to uh, adapt and or try to mitigate, mitigate between these different ideas. Just like we are trying to mediate, uh, mediate between uh, mitigating Different kind of measures or uh, methodology to 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 fight the these natural disasters. Similar that, that that's uh, so so I think uh, I don't know liquid perception is, it seems is a uh, kind of that my my higher idea to in in, the, in my way of teaching these studios and also. I hope the students can can kind of in, in, in embed this kind of uh, ideology in their design project as well. This is really, really interesting. So maybe I just stay on that for, for a minute. Um, I, I'm really curious to know a little bit more about um, perhaps your peda pedagogical strategies or um, your insights as to how you help the students or how uh, in the background you help curate 
all these different ideas mm -hmm. into that single proposal because that's always very challenging for us uh, professors. I mean, whenever we mm -hmm. we plan something like that, it, it comes with a lot of uh, challenges and unless things are rather prescribed from the start in terms of where different proposals will mm -hmm. be will be uh, located, etc. It's it's always kind of uh, hard to you know uh, mm -hmm. envision how we will. Not, not that we have an a priori idea of what is the, the studio is gonna the studio outcome is going to be, but it's even more challenging when you are mm -hmm. uh, trying to include every single idea that the students have proposed, etc. So perhaps if you can uh, elaborate a little bit more on that, I thought it was very very interesting. So the 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 okay, so the the our our in this studio, I am co-teaching with another architect, the landscape architect. Uh, who graduated from the UPenn also specialized in the, the kind of landscape urbanism and, and very familiar with the, the resilient uh, urban design or landscape design. So I, I call co teaching with the, 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 this practicing architect because I am full time professor in the university. I, in Taiwan, the, 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 by me, I'm working in the uh, National University was, I'm considered a, a kind of part of the government. So I'm not allowed to practice in the real, real world. So I have to find a, the architect that we kind of think alike. And, and, and so, 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 so all, over these years, I, I always co-teaching co with, I'm co-teaching with this architect. So that's the first, first part. So, you know, to co-teach you with someone else in the real field, then, then it definitely come from, uh, we we'll have different kind of aspect, the uh, viewpoint from the practicing architect point of view. So, and, and I'm more pushing toward more academic uh, point of view. So we will already have some dialogue uh, among the teachers. And then the student, our, our studio student also was uh, composed of uh, different kind of students. So some are, uh, for example, this studio, some students already have uh, maybe four or five years working experience uh, in a certain uh, architectural office. So, and some of course are the just newly graduate from the undergraduate and pursuing their master degree. So, so among the students themselves, they, we have some variety and some di different kind of, uh, although they are more all architects kind of, uh, they, they've been through the same similar architectural training uh, when they are in the undergraduate school, but because we, our students have some are uh, already uh, kind of experienced uh, architects uh, office and uh, working experience. So, so they create a variety also among the students. And, and also our university is, because we, we are, uh, now we are belong to a school of planning and, and design. It's more kind of design oriented, but before 10 years ago, we are part of the engineering school. So our department, half of our professor in the department is engineer, is, they are engineers, structural engineer, environmental science engineers. So they, they gave us some resource. We can, we also very, work very closely with this, uh, our colleague and who are engineers. And then besides our university has this big resource, even the big experimental field, uh, kind of close to the site we choose. And we have a big factory and big experiment, big lab. And they can conduct, I think almost one to 1000 scale kind of uh, ocean engineering testing. They create an artificial wave and then create a, a physical model and to that the artificial wave to, to do the testing. So, so we have all this uh, engineering resource that we can uh, really work with, and then we in this project that gave us a uh, opportunity also to to really work with 
the, those engineers, they help a lot also. So, and besides, let me see if they think anything else. Anyway, we the, the, the same thing, thanks to the, the, the this initiative, the, 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 the project that help us to really uh, going uh, stretching out to the resource we, we, we knew, but uh, before without this kind of project, we, we don't have opportunity to collaborate. So with the, the, the project, we have a, have a need and requirement to really make this project that touch the ground. So, so I think this project uh, also really forces us to, we have to go out and to discuss it, to mitigate uh, between different viewpoints. So maybe I'll ask one more question for my, oh, sorry. No, no uh, go ahead. Just, Don, go you ahead. go ahead, you go. I was just gonna say, I, I think maybe for, at least from my side, I'll ask one more question and then Don and later okay. if you have another one and then, um, uh, but at least um, one question I have, and this one is also a larger picture question. So, you know, the, out of the directives from the Sendai framework, uh -huh. um, which one do you think, or which ones do you think your studio was most focused on or, or addressed the most clearly, I guess, more, most explicitly? I, I think the, the maybe our, our design or research has successfully addressed on certain aspect and only partial of the, and only the, the partial of the, the, the framework proposed and not, not we, we didn't really cover the, the every aspect. And I think that the most, most successful part maybe uh, the, the our project challenged the, the, those multi scalar multi hazard and, and create, try to create more inclusive and uh, more accessible ecological uh, way aspect of the in the Sendai framework. And so our project uh, try to incorporate the industrial community and into, and also the very daily, very small scale daily social living, the kind of uh, different scale. And, and I think the student did kind of successfully like, try to understand the, those risks and how to respond and create a, in, in a design point, from the design point of view to create a preventative or regenerative the strategies in, in all these scales. But, but actually the, the framework, because the framework call for many actions and, and, and most of the actions cannot be done in such short amount of time. And, also with, with a limited group, especially the students only. And so, and a lot of actions required to work with many levels of higher, even the higher government or, because for the, our, on our side, the cost line belong to the central government, not even the local government. But within certain distance, then, then it becomes the local government. And the local government has different agent to to deal to to in charge with different aspects. So, so that part we we can only in 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 this project we didn't really uh, engage with this central government level. We can only uh, talk or discuss with uh, uh, the local some local uh, agent or local actors only. I think so. So so. But in order to move forward this project, for example, if we really want this to come true, we have to really work with the central government and to work with all different uh, agents in the higher uh, government levels. But unfortunately, we, we cannot address in the studio. That, that, that is, so that make the studio project uh, still far away from the, the, the real project. Although we try to make it close to the reality as, as much as possible, but because without all this connection or really engaging with the, 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 
the the central government and so it kind of this is not so successful in in our budget that's unfortunately but but we will keep going for example the 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 the, the all this project the resource we already put together the collaborations that we have been through uh even even with the help from the the, the, our our this big initiative, the traveling exhibition, for example, if that the the exhibition moved to Taiwan, so maybe I can use the exhibition to 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 as a as a platform or the media to to engage with the central higher government. So so I I kind of still uh keeping positive, and so and so. So I think the, the 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 outcome is not not done yet. So I still need, or I still can see a lot of connection or or more extensive network can be created through through the the outcome that we have been been done so far, and so so it will be more like regenerative system. Even for the this big outcome, still they can. Re regenerate, uh, stretching into more uh, different different level of government and different uh, institution or different different community groups even or educational institution that, that all can be become this part of regenerative system. That, that's what I think. Perfect. So I'll ask one more uh, question. Um, how do you expect the community to inhabit the proposals from, from the course? Uh, will the proposals introduce new activities or ways of living to the community? For instance, how will the community now react to disaster situations within your proposals? Because the, in the design process, we, we already talk with specific, some specific community groups. So they, they understand better of our uh, intention and our capabilities or the students' intention, the idea. So, so I think that there can be a starting point. And, and although the project looks uh, is a whole in a big region, but we, we can really start from the some, we can find some props. Uh, just some small location they can cross, correspond into our issues and and easy to work or easy to understand, uh, easy can be understood by the community people. Then we can start from those small scale, very specific location and very simple idea. And we can start from this kind of props and then see how that goes. And for example, the. The, the, I just mentioned also the, the our exhibition, if they can be traveling exhibition, we can certainly move the exhibition also or part of the exhibition into the site. And then as a kind of uh, uh, in, in initiative also, they can initiate other actions um, between the school and the community people and then can keep going and, and just keep being positive. That's great. I mean, in a way, you, you've, you've answered a little bit of what I was going to maybe try to wrap up with, which is uh, what happens next? I mean, because on the one hand, you uh, it seems clear that there are aspects of this project that you see as being really useful, mm -hmm. both for your students, but also for the program and for the university to become more engaged at both at a very high government level, but obviously all the way down to the community level. Yes. So. I'm curious, and, and also I think, I mean, it's certainly a question we ask in Melbourne is the degree to which running this, not, not it's never the same project, but the same thematic project, even possibly the same site or location, multiple times in that iterative way starts to reveal things okay. that you could never understand if you do it only once and then go on okay. to something completely different. So I guess I'm, what I'm asking is, how do you see uh, yourself, the program, the themes that have come out of this initiative? Uh, how do you see it going forward? Yeah, yes, definitely. I, I think we, we would 
th th this project we did it for two years. So I think uh, we are going to keep for the uh, keep doing it. So that they um, they kind of gave us a very good starting point. These two years uh, experience and the outcome. So so definitely we are going to into a long longer term. And so the for the this coming year studio and the, the next year next year we, we are I think we are going to the, the, the same side and to try to locate and maybe sometimes we can pick smaller area and sometimes we can going back to the bigger region so so that, that that's for sure we are going in this direction so and I, I think also uh, thanks to the this initiative this program that kind of help us to uh, coming back to our our it's actually near near our city our near our university so but because it's too near sometimes we just forget just just like try to look uh, more further beyond and look since there are some more urgent issues beyond our our own city but but now it's a good chance for us to look back and and look longer and in a in a longer term try to find uh, find try to dig deeper and 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 make this uh, really engaging studio. I, I think uh, we are we are going in this direction. And also the the because the experience of this uh, pandemic, you know, Taiwan is a as a, as a pandemic bubble, we, we seems, for example, last year, when, when around our islands, the, the war is in, into a very severe pandemic situation, but Taiwan is like a happy bubble. Not, nothing happened last year. And so the, 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 for us, it seems very, very kind of strange. But, but it's, for the last three, four months, we have experienced already that the pandemic situation like the other, the other country around the world that you have experienced 16, 18 months ago. We, 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 we just started to experience three, four months ago. We are kind of lagging very behind. But with this kind of uh, strange experience, I think the, the pandemic situation also helped us to frame the, the current uh, resilient issues or the emergent, the, 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 this urgency to the climate change. And, and, and in Taiwan, we have also geopolitical, we, we are in a geopolitical struggle between the US, US and China. So, so I think the the this pandemic uh, situation also help us to frame this global situation um, in Taiwan because the, the the week start to a lot of people a lot of local people they start to realize the 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 urgency of the this global heat issues. For example, in our program would be more toward climate change and the this natural disasters that those local people they usually they don't quite aware of the scale of the these issues. And, and with the pandemic, the I think the most of the, the, the people in Taiwan, the, uh, the local people before they don't care about the, those global issues. They they think it's does climate change is too far away from their daily life. And with the pandemic, they can start realizing no one is, is uh, they can be, they, they can get away from uh, those big issues. That those issues, uh, we, we have to look at more extensive global histories and uh, global uh, situations, especially on the, the, the issues our program is looking at. And I think the pandemic also helped for, for us 
for the the, the local community people to to get the urgency. So, so to act. So I think it's uh, in, a, in a good way also. Well, I think uh, Professor Shui, I think that's a fantastic um, way to to put a bookend to the interview. I uh -huh. think it's a it's a really kind of good um, good thought to end on. So thank you very much, Professor Shui. It's, uh -huh. it's been a real pleasure for all of us to look deeply at the work of your studio, and we really learned uh -huh. a lot from from your studio and also from this discussion. So. We just wanted to thank you very much for your time and and um yeah we hope that we, we can actually continue talking yes. more like this shouldn't be the end of the discussion between you and us interestingly enough what you were describing about taiwan's uh, experience of the pandemic is exactly the same here mm -hmm. um you know we were in a bubble for a long time but now we're getting the worst of it now so <laughs> no no but we anyways, are really um, great so thank you yes yeah thank you we are really grateful to this program for giving us uh, this big opportunity, maybe to, to just to find a solidarity across the world at this time. Yeah. I think this is uh, really great. Thank you very well, much. When we're, when, when we're flying again, we should go to Taiwan and you should come yes. to yes. here and we need to exchange more. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, <laughs> Thank you very and, much, Professor Shui. And hopefully we, maybe, you. We'll, maybe you. we'll see each other in Japan as well for yes, the exhibition yes, and yes. the opening. So. Yes. Bye. Thank you, Professor Dalaf, okay. Professor Mom, Professor Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.